This video is meant to follow the one-way ANOVA uh, procedure video, and I'm going to go through and explain the output. Um, so here you can see that I have my output. Um, I'm going to save this and I'll leave it in my Aporto. So I'll give it a name, so BDI output, and I'll save this. Um, but in the previous video, I showed you that I exported a Word doc. So um, I would need to go to this file download to get it off of my Aporto and download it to my computer. Um, if you're not working on Aporto, you don't have to worry about that. But I would just want to get this BDI output and download it. So I've already done that and I'm opening it here. Um, you'll notice that there's a difference in the way that it looks. So here it goes straight into ANOVA um, to one way ANOVA. And then in this one, we have this table. So we need to delete this table. It's not useful. I'm going to right click and say delete table. Oh, I need to save this as a docx. So this is the this is the benefit of uh, or this this is the drawback of the doc doc is that you have to save it as a um, Google Doc, which is not a big deal, but it is prettier than the dot um, docx. So uh, I'm going to right click. I'm going to delete my table. Now I can edit. So here. Um, you can see that we have descriptives. We have a uh, number of different information, um, number of different uh, different variables that we're learning about. And then we have tests for homogeneity of variances. We have the ANOVA and the effect sizes. And then we have the post hoc tests. So we're gonna go through all of this. I do want to point out that when you're here, you can see that it's wider and so everything fits on one row. Um, and that is not the case in our output that we're working with here. So it's gonna look a little bit different. Okay, so first, this is our descriptives table. This gives us the sample size N. So I could type this in. It's one of the benefits of um, uploading this to Word. This is our mean our standard deviation, our standard error, and then also our 95% confidence interval, which you don't need to worry about for this. Um, but the idea here is that this is for the Beck depression inventory score for each of these groups. So men had a Beck depression inventory score of 30.91. Women had a Beck depression inventory mean of 29.18. Um, Non-binary other had a Beck depression inventory score of 28.22. Overall, the total um, 150 people had an, a mean or average score of 29.33. And then these are their corresponding standard deviations. So this gives us um, a lot of information, a lot of descriptive information. This notice that this says descriptives and then it has minimum and maximum. Um, I don't actually, I don't need this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to oop, delete table. Um, because I, I don't need it. So this is for you to use to make sure that you have your data, uh, that you understand it. And so you don't need to worry about it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to, um, we're going to look at our descriptive information. And we want to describe what's happening because you're going to write about this in your paper. So first of all, um, men have the highest mean depression or BDI score. And then I would put my mean equals and then 30.91 comma standard deviation equals 15.07. So this um, talking about the group and then saying what the mean and standard deviation are, and then I have the, these in italics, that's uh, APA style. And you can highlight across to make sure you know um, what information you're talking about. You could even include N equals 44 if you wanted to in there. Um, you can look at Purdue OWL for more information or lecture material. So I'm gonna highlight this. And then we have women. I do wanna point out that if you're looking at um, other guides, the numbers might be different. Like if you're looking at just a general guide, it's not meant to go with this video. So if you notice that there's men, women, and non-binary, it's, it's different, um, different data set. So just keep that in mind. Uh, okay. So I'm going to highlight this with deal. 
So here we have this information that we want to include. So men have the highest mean depression um, followed by women, which is 28. So mean equals 28.22, standard deviation equals 17.01, and non-binary individuals. And I think I noted this before, but this is fake data, so not real. Um, this is this would not reflect what we would what we would typically find. I just randomized um, some data for us to play with. So mean for non-binary is 28.22. Standard deviation equals 17.98. So if you write all of this out in APA style, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to put together your APA results, which we're gonna work on in lecture. Um, and so this just gives us our descriptive information here. So this is one, one useful piece of information. Next, we're gonna look at our test of homogeneity of variances. We're looking at this um, based on the mean. We're looking at our Levine statistic, but really we're looking at this SIG. So what's happening here is that if our um, Levine statistic significance, which is our p-value in Levine test, um, basically if it is uh, greater than 0.05, we can assume equal variances. Or, uh, yes, we can assume equal variances. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, variances across all the groups. So we have three groups now. So for this one, um, again, it's similar to the independent samples t test. Our significance, our p-value is a 0.17. So the p-value here is 0.1, I'm gonna round up to so 0.20. So we can um, fail to reject that there's no difference. So that means that we can, we can say that we think there's a difference. So fail to reject the null that there is no difference. This is just for the Levine test. So this is just to identify that we can use this. Um, so if you if you are not able to um, fail to reject, if you reject the null, if this is really small p-value, then there's an alternate statistic that we can look at, um, but we don't need to worry about that in this example. And you most likely will not have to, um, you won't have to come across that uh, would be my anticipation. So if you do in your study, then we can talk about it. Um, so this is this homogeneity variance is one of our assumptions for the test. Remember we talked about um, we make some assumptions as uh, researchers and then we can test them. We don't focus on that in this class, uh, but it's just one of the tests that we do. So now we need to talk about our actual ANOVA results. So here where it says ANOVA, this is your ANOVA table. You're getting a lot of information. Um, this is your between groups. So we're looking at um, variation between groups and also within groups. And what we want to know here, we're going to report our degrees of freedom between and within, which is this right here. And then we also need to talk, we need to report our F statistic. So that's our test statistic for an ANOVA. We use an F distribution. Remember, that's the one that doesn't have the same two tails to it. Um, so we're looking for an overall difference and that's what the, the F score will give us. Um, so we want to evaluate that number. And then SIG is our p-value. So we want to evaluate that number as well. I'm running out of different colors. Let's do, well, it's too close, like purple, there we go. Um, so here, what we can say is that our F value or our F score equals 0 0.31. So it can exceed one. So you would put a leading zero here. Um, so we have that, so we know our F. And then we have our significance, our p-value. I don't know why I'm writing significance. P-value equals 0.74. That's huge. So this is our p-value. Notice I'm italicizing. Um, and then we have our degrees of freedom, 
which uh, for this, it would be written as, um, you'll see in the, in the APA style, but it would be in parentheses, you would do the two, which is our between groups um, degrees of freedom, and then our within groups degrees of freedom, which is 147. Uh, so this information will be used in our APA style results that we'll be writing. Uh, so this, this actually means that we're going to fail to reject our null hypothesis. So what we can say is that um, overall, we cannot reject the null hypothesis that there are no differences between any of the groups. So there's overall no difference across our groups. So because of this, we actually don't need a, um, we actually don't need a, a post hoc test. Um, before I move on to that though, I'm just gonna put a note. So we're gonna fail to reject, but let's look at our effect size. Uh, so you can report your effect size. It's um, the partial eta squared is the effect size that we would report here. Um, and so our eta squared value, we use the point estimate. This is very, very, very small. You'll notice that in the guide, I gave you a guide for this, just like we use for Cohen's D and Pearson's R, it's just it's a little different. Um, so this is, it cannot exceed uh, one. So you would have no leading zero on this, but this is very small. So to come back to this, when our significance is, 0.74, that means that it's very likely that we would find these kinds of differences um, if the null hypothesis were true, if there's actually no differences across the population. So uh, we don't need the post hoc test. It's only, I'm gonna put a note here that it's only necessary to run post hoc tests when the F statistic is significant or um, which means there uh, when there is an overall difference across the groups. Uh, one thing I wanna note is that a lot of times when you're looking for information online, you'll see that um, people refer to the result of this test as the effect of the dependent vari of the independent variable on the dependent variable, even for things like gender, um, I do I want to caution you with that wording that we want to be really clear that we're not talking about cause and effect and that we're we don't have any um, evidence of causation if we don't do an experimental study. So again, this is not necessary right now, but I want to explain it in case you find a significant difference. So this shows you the different pairs. You can see that this compares men and women. And then for that pair, there is a p-value. So men and women, the p-value here is less, um, is greater than 0.05. So that's not significant. This is going to be the uh, pairing, if we look at men, let's look at women and non-binary or other. So let's make this a different color. So this one, I'm gonna make green and we're gonna compare women and non-binary. So this is a different pair. And if you look over here, um, so it's this combination, you can see that that is also not significant. So the p-value is really high there. And then we can look at our combination of non-binary and men. That's the only other combination that we haven't looked at. So we're just looking at the paired, um, the paired groups and if they are significantly different from each other. So you can refer back to PowerPoint 15 for some visuals on that. Um, and then also the, the uh, activity that we're gonna do after this one. So I'm gonna change this to blue and our p-value is again, not significant. That's because there's no significant differences across the group. So um, this is unnecessary. You would just say that there are no differences anywhere and leave it at that. And again, we're gonna practice writing this in APA style. Um, so here, uh, I do wanna point out that this pair, men and non-binary, um, is the same as this one right here, because this is non-binary in men. 
So you just need to find one pair um, for, for each. So this we're looking, this is looking at men and you can see it's against women and non-binary. And then this is both uh, rows are looking at women compared to men and non-binary. And then this, these rows are again, um, non-binary other compared with men and women. So you just need to pick one um, of them. So you don't need to duplicate the information. So that's how that works. Uh, so that's where we're going to stop. Um, there is additional information on confidence interval, um, but we're not going to we're not going to get into that for this test. So this is the end of our interpretation of ANOVA effect sizes. Um, but again, our, ultimately, what we found is that there are no differences in Beck depression inventory scores um, across men, women, and non-binary or other individuals.